Hello, and welcome to a very big Earthling Publications unboxing. This, my friends, is Dune. Frank Herbert's Dune, which it's in a big box. It's a big book. Oh, it's got foam. Who doesn't love foam? Good old Suntup foam, or in this case, Earthling Publications foam. Very, very thick stuff. We got inch an inch of foam. There's not a uh, little finger hole for me to pop my finger in, so we're going to have to go into the foam. This, oh, it's a beast. I mean, it's a beast of a novel to begin with. I might need to adjust the camera. Uh, yeah, i got to adjust it a little bit. Pardon me while I back it up. Backing it up. All right. Dune by Frank Herbert. The numbered edition. The rarest, or the lowest limitation, I don't want to say rarest, that's probably not uh, a great way of saying it. The lowest limitation of Dune ever. 250 copies. Uh, Centipede Press was 500 numbered copies, 250 unnumbered. There's only 250 total for this, between numbered and deluxe. Dune with Frank Herbert, Earthling Publications, Clamshell here. Woo! Look at that. Nice kind of design on the inside of the case. It's not, there's no texture to it. It's just, you know, it's just paper. But you get it on both sides. We're going to get the slip case, the tray case, out of here. Right off the bat, look at Richard A. Kirk's artwork of Arrakis. Woo! Wow, that's nice. So, We'll get to the book in a second. Richard A. Kirk is the artist. And it almost looks like, like Jodorowsky's Dune. I, I mean, I've seen like, you know, the stills, the production artwork from Jodorowsky's Dune, which never came into full fruition. A uh, great documentary, literally called Jodorowsky's Dune. Um, kind of very si stylistically similar to that. This is, hand it's bound in handmade paper. So this... Gorgeous, gorgeous paper. Sand-colored paper. Handmade by Zoe uh, Goring over at Cave Paper. Uh, stamped on the spine there. Dune by Frank Herbert. Let us dive in. Nice little blue sky and the papers. Now, this is really cool. So, uh, so the, the other ten are lettered. So this is two, I, I, I thought maybe they were deluxe. I'm not going lettered. This is 240 numbered copies. This is 68, which actually I requested to match my centipede copy of Dune. Uh, I didn't bring that with me because I figured this might be a long video. But I did do an unboxing of the centipede press Dune uh, if you wanted to compare them. I didn't want to directly compare them in one video. Uh, one, because it's, I feel like it detracts from one of the editions. Uh, both editions are gorgeous, beautiful works of art in their own right. I didn't want to kind of compare them in such a way because, I mean, they, they're both going to have their pros and their cons. And I don't want to, you know, be detrimental to a work of art. Uh, as I was saying, 240 numbered copies signed by David Brin, who did the uh, introduction, and Richard A. Kirk, who did the artwork. Uh, there are 10 lettered copies, which are available. They're, they haven't gone on sale yet, but there's a wait list, uh, which are also signed by Frank Herbert. Uh, it's a signature, obviously, acquired from another book. Uh, I don't know whether or not they're taking it out as like a book plate or if they're just inserting the whole page, uh, kind of like uh, Gauntlet did with Ray Bradbury. I don't know. So let's dive in. Dune. Whoa! Dune! Uh, printed on multiple colors, apparently, because there you have it. Uh, so if you haven't read Dune, it is intergalactic intergalactic epic of in, epic proportions. That's redundant, but yeah. It deals with the planet Arrakis. The Harkonnens were in charge of the planet Arrakis and the harvesting of spice on it. It's a desert planet, often often referred to as Dune. Uh, the spice melange and the properties it gives are one of the hot commodities of the galaxy. The Savant Star's introduction by David Brin. 
Uh, so the Harkonnens are out and the Atreides are in. And these are two warring families. And this is very much a novel of war between those families. A little backstabbing, a little betrayal, a little bit of uh, being left for dead. Or I guess surviving and being left for dead. Trying to... Uh, Paul Atreides. Uh, Muad'Dib, as he becomes known as. He's the chosen one. Uh, must make contact with the Fremen, who are the natives of the planets. Uh, so anyways, Richard A. Kirk, the box. Put your hand in the box. Uh, so, the... Okay, so it is printed. So thankfully there's no text in the back. It kind of gives just the appreciation for the artwork within. Uh, Richard A. Kirk is no stranger to Earthling publications. It's actually a big year for Earthling and Richard A. Kirk. In addition to Dune being published this year, the, uh, I guess now it's the 35th anniversary edition of Weave World uh, by uh, Clive Barker. The lettered edition is being published this year. Uh, Ten years ago, the 25th anniversary edition. I could be wrong on that. Maybe it was just 20th anniversary. I think it was 25th, though, uh, was published. I don't own that, but Richard A. Kirk did the artwork for that. It's a hot commodity. Even the gift edition is... Uh, there's a Gurney Halleck training with Paul Atreides. Uh, but anyways, Richard, Richard A. Kirk did the artwork for that. I do not have that edition. Even the gift edition is a hot commodity. Uh, the lettered edition... Is uh, has taken about ten years to uh, come to fruition to be published, but the lettered edition is right on the horizon. Uh, it's actually going on sale later this week, I believe. If you're watching this, it's not on sale yet. I think it's Wednesday it goes on sale, but uh, it's you know right around the corner because it's currently Monday. If you're watching this, so you have two days. Uh, there's the sandworm. Just because the sandworms, they uh, they are attracted to movement. They they will they will feel you out. It's very nice, very thick paper. There is an illustration there. Okay, yeah. Vladimir Harkoden. Uh, I don't know. I don't want to get into spoiler territory with this artwork, but so I'm kind of hesitant flipping through it. We're into book two, Muad'Dib, after a little bit of uh, betrayal. They are surviving out in Dune on Arrakis. Uh, I will say, there's the broken ornithopter. Uh, it is a superb novel. Uh, this one is definitely a classic. Uh, the first three are classics, in my opinion. I like all six of Frank Herbert's novels, but they get weird. They get very weird. And so I know some people, you have... Uh, some people who appreciate the original Frank Herbert titles, some who only appreciate the first three. Uh, then you have your purists who only appreciate the very first one, this one. And, uh, you know, to each their own. Paul Miller is only doing this one. He's only doing Dune. He is not continuing up. Uh, that is Jared's territory. With Centipede Press, he is doing the full six that Frank Herbert did. Uh, Dune Messiah being the most recent one, and he's only gotten two in. Uh, but I know the next one. The next ones are around the corner. Oh, we have some appendices. Appendices: The Ecology of Dune, Pardo Kynes, The Religion of Dune. If you want to really get into the religion of Dune, you can read Brian Herbert's novels that he co-wrote with uh, Kevin J. Anderson. That's a very, very controversial subject in the terminology of the Imperium. Uh, because a lot of people... Oh, we do have a map. A lot of people don't like Herbert's, you know, it's kind of cash grab as they see it. I'm not going to lie. I haven't read all of Herbert, uh, Brian Herbert's. Uh, but I did read the first three, which is the House Trilogy. Uh, you know, you have your House Atreides, House Harkonnen, and House... Shit, was it Camino? I'm a little rusty. This was years back when I read them. Uh, I loved it. I actually enjoyed his... Uh, I enjoyed that trilogy. 
Uh, it wasn't the same, but I mean, it wasn't bad. It kind of reminded me of almost like Song of Fire and Ice. Uh, I guess more than it reminded me of Dune, but you know, it, it was good. Um, so this is completely sold out. Uh, 250 copies, 240 of which are numbered. Uh, and there, it is sold out. That being said, there is a wait list. Uh, Paul Miller over at Earthling Publications uh, might have copies left over. And so he, he's putting together a wait list uh, for those copies. So you can join that list if you want to try your luck. Uh, it is a stunning publication. Oh my God. This video does not do it justice. Um, like I said, it is still it is very different than Centipede Press, but I'm not going to compare them because I, I don't want to detract from the artwork of each edition. Um, uh, one thing I do like about Centipede, I love the the uh, cap slip case. I'm just a sucker for cap slip cases in general. Uh, both very different art directions. Uh, you had Mark Molner who did uh, Centipedes, uh, Richard A. Kirks who did Earthlings. Like I said, very different approach. There's like some gunk or something on my dust jacket there, and now it's gone. There we go. Very different approaches, so I can appreciate both. Uh, very different styles as well. Paul Miller uh, going... <laughs> Paul Miller of Earthling going more earthy with his publication. Um, he is going stylistically um, more akin to the novel. Uh, whereas Jared is just kind of going more fine press. Uh, he uses the Nabucco cloth, at least in the first one. He did not use the Nabucco prestige for the uh, for Messiah, uh, mostly because of cost. Um, but yeah, there's actually there's other parallels. Let's talk about the, the parallels between the two editions. Uh, both of them feature so Dune uh, won both the Nebula and the Hugo Award. Uh, fun fact about the introductions of both. Uh, David Brin, who did the introduction for uh, this one, also won the Nebula and the Hugo uh, for Best Novel. Uh, separate novels, but Best Novel. Uh, the Michael Swanwick did the introduction for the Centipede Edition. He technically has also won both, but I believe his Nebula was for a short story. Or maybe it was his Hugo that was for a short story. But still, you know, that's a nice little comparison between the two. Uh, fun other fact that I just happened to stumble upon when I was looking up David Brin and Michael Swanwick's uh, comparisons. Uh, they're both born in 1950. Not that that really makes any difference, but, you know, it's fun that, you know, they both did introductions to Dune, and they both are the same age. So anyways, uh, man, Paul Miller has knocked it out of the park. He He's had a... I, I Actually, I, I was going to say, I was going to say he had a splendid year, but I, I'm trying to think of how many titles he published. The titles that I know he published this year have all been splendid. Uh, his his Halloween title, uh, which is Midas, is one of my favorite reads of the year. Dune is absolutely stunning. Uh, the lettered edition of Weave World is sure to be beautiful. I am not getting that because it's going to be at least fifteen hundred dollars, uh, and I you know I would love a copy of Weave World, especially one uh, with the Earthling quality, but I cannot swing for that. Um, but yeah, he's also got a Jeffrey Thomas title coming out. I actually can't think of any other titles he published this year. He published the character edition of Ghoul in the Cape, but I'm not going to count that because it's just it's the numbered edition with a slipcase and a very unique limitation page. But I mean, it's just the numbered edition otherwise. Um, what else did he publish this year? I don't know. It might have been a low-key year for Paul Miller. I mean, the titles he published were massive, but uh, yeah. Anyways, thank you very much for watching. Uh, please consider liking and subscribing. Like I said, I do have the unboxing video of both Dune and Dune Messiah from Centipede Press on the channel. If you wanted to check those out, be sure to check out Earth and Publications. Uh, not all of their titles are as massive or as fancy as this. This is definitely on the higher end of Earth Earthing Publications titles. But even the lower end are still beautiful cloth-bound books. Uh, Smithson Smithson bindings. They're 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 nice. So even though they're not going to be as large or as elaborate or elegant as this, you're still getting incredible value for your your, your buck. Uh, so check out Earthing Publications. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you around next time.